Well, I want to begin by saying praise. Praise be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because today's scripture text is so heartwarming and so encouraging for us today. It is so heartwarming and encouraging because we see Jesus' tears. We see the compassion and the love of our good shepherd. And we remember that we do not weep alone on this old and fading earth. And our faith, our hope, our love is all strengthened as we look forward to a time and a place in which God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. Praise be to our God. Allow me to review this story that leads up to today's scripture text. There was a man named Lazarus, and he was ill, and he was dying. He had two sisters named Mary and Martha. And Mary and Martha, they sent messengers to Jesus. They asked him to come to them and help them and heal their brother Lazarus. But here's the crazy thing. Jesus stayed two days longer in the place where he was. He delayed his visit to Lazarus. And in a very real sense, Jesus let Lazarus die. Why did our Lord do this? According to God's word earlier in this chapter, he did this because he loved Martha and he loved Mary. And of course, he loved Lazarus. He loved them and he wanted them to know his glory. They were his beloved sheep and they needed to know his gospel of resurrection life. This was Jesus's will. And so as he left, Jesus said these amazing words to the disciples. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. Jesus goes to resurrect Lazarus from death. When Jesus came to where Martha and Mary was, Lazarus, he had already been in the tomb for four days. Lazarus was dead, and it seemed as if Jesus had come too late. Martha went to Jesus and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. One can imagine the sadness and the pain. One can imagine the sorrow and the struggle in Martha's heart and mind. And I'm sure she loved her brother very much. And yet Martha still believed. She still believed that Jesus could help Lazarus. And this is amazing. Jesus told Martha that he is the resurrection and the life. And Martha, by the amazing grace of God, Martha believed. What is grief? If not faith, hope, and love persevering. And so, yes, Martha believed, but the thing is, she had no idea what Jesus' plan was. She thought Lazarus would be resurrected on the last day, in the far future. But no, Jesus would awaken and resurrect Lazarus on that day, right before Martha's eyes. She did not know what Jesus' plan was. She did not know how much Jesus loved her. And so this brings us to today's passage. Martha, she goes back to Mary, her sister, and she tells Mary, Jesus has arrived. And Mary rose up quickly, and Mary went to Jesus. And when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet. And she said the same words, that Martha said. Mary said to Jesus, 
Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Now what happens next, dear Highland, is something absolutely unforgettable. When Jesus saw Mary weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and he was greatly troubled and Jesus wept. This is our God. This is our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. This is who he is. Our God is full of compassion. Our good shepherd loves us and he understands us. Jesus wept. And our God is full of righteousness and holiness and wrath. Wrath against our two great enemies, death and the devil. Jesus was greatly troubled. Jesus was greatly troubled. In the original Greek language, this phrase doesn't actually mean that Jesus was merely worried. No, this phrase means that Jesus, in his perfect and sinless human nature, Jesus had a holy anger and he had a righteous fury. But why? Because death and the devil were enemies of his beloved sheep. And he came to destroy the works of the devil and overcome death in victory. That's why Jesus was greatly troubled. And so praise be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is our God. This is who he is. But also, these are the famous words. Jesus wept. He was sad. He was brokenhearted because his sheep were sad and brokenhearted. Jesus saw the suffering of Mary and his heart was filled with pity and compassion. And he did what is unforgettable. He wept. He wept with Mary. He cared for her. He understood her. Jesus wept. In the words of Isaiah 53, Jesus was a shepherd of sorrows. Jesus was acquainted with grief. Jesus bore our griefs and Jesus carried our sorrows. And so praise be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is our God. This is who he is. Dear Highland, may we never forget these tears of our King. His tears are his glory. And his tears, they are a comfort to us. Because as we wait, as we wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, there are so many reasons for us to lament. There are many times when we cry. I think about our church members who are old or who are little and young. Church members who are dealing with health problems. I think about cancer and all the helplessness and the hopelessness that comes with it. I think about church members who are dealing with very difficult problems at home or at school. 
or at work. I think about the heartache and the heartbreak that comes with relationships. I think about church members who may be very depressed or very, very lonely. I think about all the feelings that come to our mind when we think about our parents getting old and seeing our grandparents pass away. I think about the coronavirus pandemic and many church members who have lost their loved ones in the past several years. Highland, this pilgrim life is full of sadness and sorrow. We face much suffering and hardship on this old and fading earth. There are so many tears that we shed. There is death. There is mourning and crying. There is pain. And so we lament, we cry. But when you suffer and when you cry, may you know that you are not alone in your tears because Jesus wept. And your tears are accompanied by the tears of your good shepherd. And I wanna add something, it's not on the slide. I just realized that when Jesus wept, he too did not weep alone. For he wept together with Mary. This is who our God is. We do not cry alone. And when you suffer and when you cry, we need to remember that one day, soon and very soon, Jesus will wipe away every tear from your eyes. Listen to these words from Revelation 21, verse 4. God will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. Amen. How is this possible? How can tears be wiped away forever? The answer is amazing. Jesus does this through his life, and his death, and his resurrection. Adam was supposed to achieve, he was supposed to earn life, but not just an earthly life, he was supposed to win this final glorified life, a consummate, an eschatological life. But this never happened. This life never happened. Adam sinned, and instead of earning a glorified life, he earned punishment of death. Man became sinners, and all of us, every sinner must die, the first death on earth and the second death in hell. Death, therefore, had a purpose, a reason. Death was God's justice, and Lazarus, deserved to die. We all deserve to die. But God shows grace and mercy and God shows compassion to his people. God chose some sinners to be forgiven, forgiven of their sins and saved from ultimate death. God would send another Adam-like representative, someone else who would achieve and earn and win that final life, that glorified life that Adam and none of us could ever achieve. And so our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came to save us. He lived a perfect life for us. And he credits that righteousness to us. Jesus died a substitutionary death for us and he 
paid for all of our sins. And Jesus rose from the grave so that now we too have resurrection life. So that means now when we die or when anyone we love dies, any of us who believe in Jesus, it's only a sleep. Go to bed. And when Jesus returns, when Jesus comes back, do you believe what I'm going to say? He will awaken us. No more sleeping. Death for us will be asleep. Because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And if you believe in this, if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in who he is and what he has done, if you believe his words, his truth, then you will have what Martha and Mary and you will have what Lazarus all have. You will have Jesus. And you will have his resurrection life. You will have his kingdom. This is how Jesus wipes away every tear from the eyes of his people. And so believe in him this morning. Praise be to our God. This is who our God is. This is who Jesus is. Dear Highland, he, Jesus loves you. And he wants you to know this. He wants you to know his glory. You are his beloved sheep. And you need to know his gospel of resurrection life. This is his will. And so be encouraged. May your faith and may your hope and may your love be strengthened because there may be times in your life when you might pray to God the same words that Mary and Martha said. They said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And so maybe it may seem sometimes that God delays in his response to us. There may also be times in your life when you might lack love and compassion for others. Maybe it's been a very long time since you last wept for someone else. There may be times in your life when you might fall into great despair at a funeral. Maybe you are terrified by death. If those days come, if those days are now, I ask you to remember God's word today. Remember Lazarus's story. See how Jesus wept. Remember his tears and believe in Jesus. Our final life of glory, it is coming soon. Whoever believes in Jesus, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in Jesus shall never die. Do you believe this? Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this beautiful and wonderful reminder and encouragement that Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. And that when we die, it is but a sleep. And that you come, you will come to awaken us. That we will live forever in the kingdom that one day you will wipe away all tears. Until then, Father, help us. Holy Spirit, help us to know that Jesus wept and that when we weep, we do not weep alone. Thank you for your compassion, Jesus. Help us to know it, to feel it, to rest in it this morning. 
Bless your people today. Come, Lord Jesus, come. In Jesus' name we pray.